Hello everyone and welcome to this GeoTime Technology Preview video. In this video we're going to take a look at some of the new enhancements that are being made to GeoTime to facilitate cell site analysis. This process involves two separate data sources. The first one's going to be a document that contains the cell tower information. This will include things like the location of the tower as well as the definition of the different sectors on that tower. The second document is going to be a call details record. This is going to be where the activity from a handset has been recorded by the provider. Our first step of this analysis process is going to be to import the cell tower locations. To do this, we're going to start with our cell tower key. This file is going to have the definition of each tower as well as the sector information. The sector information represents the different antennas on a tower. We also have the location represented in lat long of that tower. This is going to be important for us to be able to place it correctly on the map. Within GeoTime, we now have the ability to import these cell tower keys. Here I'm importing the cell tower keys Excel file. As location type, I'm going to choose cell tower. I now have new options available to me. GeoTime has automatically detected the columns that represent lat, longitude, and azimuth. In this file, there is no beam width or radius defined. We can easily go and set the beam width for each of the sectors as 120 degrees, and we'll also set the radius as one mile. We now need to provide a location identifier for each sector. This is typically going to be a combination of multiple fields. In this data set, the fields that we need to look at are going to be switch, cell, and sector. The combination of these three columns provides us with a unique identifier that will match up to the activity on our call detail record file. Lastly, I'm simply going to change the visual look of how GeoTime is going to draw these towers on the map. Here I'm going to use a transparent orange color. Let's go ahead and import these into GeoTime as new locations. Here we can see that we've created new tower locations in the greater Los Angeles area. As I zoom in, we can see that each tower is represented by different sectors. These different sectors are based on the cell tower key that we've been provided by a provider. The next step of this process is going to be to bring in our call detail records. This is going to represent all of the activity from a handset in a given period of time. Here's our call detail records as represented in Excel. You can see that we have the switch, sector, and tower information, which will be useful to be able to create our unique identifier. Let's send this data across to GeoTime. Once we've got the data imported into GeoTime, we can start to perform analysis of the movement of the subscriber. Here I have a two-dimensional view of all of the activity of this subscriber. Let's go ahead and look at this in 3D so we can make sense of the movement over time. By turning off all the towers that haven't been used, we can see all of the sectors that were used by this handset. If I were to change the amount of time that we're viewing, we can actually get an interactive playback of all of the sectors that are being used depending on the events that are visible. Here we're looking at roughly a week's worth of time. By playing this back, we can see the movement of the individual over time. We can also create a heat map of the different sectors that are most frequented by the mobile. In order to do this, we're going to use our geocharts capability. I'm going to apply a color scheme to that geocharts, and then we're going to turn back on our cell tower locations. Here we can see a heat map of the cell tower sectors that are used most by this mobile device. This has been a technology preview video of the new cell site analysis capabilities soon to be introduced in GeoTime. Thanks for watching.